Welcome, everybody. Spring training continues here in the Cactus League. I'm Gary Thorne. We're in Arizona. John Cruck and Steve Phillips for 2K Sports. Matt Cain, we'll see if he's on. He's ready to pitch. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? As a hitter, when you face Matt Cain, you have to think along with him. He has that overpowering stuff, but at times he scatters it. At times he tries to nibble and work off the plate. You have to work the count, be patient, and get a pitch to hit. When you get it, drive it. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, you talk about a veteran presence in the middle of the lineup. Paul Canerco has been one of the more consistent power hitters in baseball over the last eight to ten years. He's a guy that just does it in a calm, quiet way. He doesn't put up the huge monster numbers, but he puts up the consistent numbers every year. But he also loves to get that big hit. Let's see if he can deliver one here in this one. And it's Juan Pierre now to lead it off. For the Chicago White Sox, left fielder, number six, Juan Pierre. Good pitch from Kane. Swung on and missed. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Hot shot towards the hole. Here's a look at how the Giants will line up defensively. Uh, Steve, a factor for them? Well, Nate Sherholz out there, a big guy. Doesn't run all that well, but his instincts allow him to run the ball down and make big plays. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Ramirez will foul that one away. Kane gets set and delivers. You're out. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. The ability to move your pitches around within the zone, to change a hitter's eye level and keep them off balance are critical to success. Very successful there. Three pitches and a strikeout. And here's Paul Konerko. One out man on first. Fastball swung on a miss. 0-1. Uh, 2009, the White Sox find themselves in the middle of the AL Central Division. A big part of that was their failures on the road in 09. Swung on, liner to right. The throw in time for the up. I'm talking about the White Sox on the road. The adage of baseball, of course, 500 on the road. Well, they weren't able to do that, 36 and 45. Yeah, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that their offense needs to be a little more consistent. The problem with the Chicago White Sox offensively is the fact that they need to get the top of the order on base. They need to be. This one swung on and driven hard. Rowan's there. And he's there to retire the song. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. So it'll be the San Francisco Giants, bottom of the first. And Gavin Floyd is the pitcher. He's going to start for Chicago. As he gets the uh, Giants lineup today, John, what's, uh, what's his strategy? A lot of people in baseball thought Gavin Floyd couldn't pitch in the big leagues, but yet he's become a dependable starting pitcher so far in his career. And how does he do it? Well, he finally has the confidence to throw the ball over the plate and let hitters hit it. He has a good fastball, but he gets a lot of strikeouts. On Swung ground ball to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. And that sets down Rowan. Pepsi presents our starting lineup. So look here at the Giants. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Anytime you can have a switch hitter in the middle of your lineup, like you have with Pablo Sandoval, you have something special. At such a young age, he's established himself as one of the best hitters in the league. And Sanchez is batted. Well, Gavin Floyd, again, another pretty solid season for the Chicago White Sox in 2009. 500 record, 11 and 11, a 4.06 ERA. Here's a guy who can strike people out. He has that big, sharp breaking ball that gets a lot of hitters to chase. Sliders in there, no balls and a strike. 
Really don't know what, who Gavin Floyd is or how good he's going to be. He's at a point now in his career where it's time to show whether or not he is the star that the White Sox think he's going to be. Well, when he was drafted in the first round by the Phillies out of Baltimore, they thought he was going to be a, a number one starter. Just hasn't panned out that way. The Phillies actually, some people in that organization, thought he would never be an effective pitcher in the big leagues. He went to Chicago. He's been pretty good. But, yeah, you're right. He has to step up this year and make that final leap to be one of the top starters in baseball. And it remains one and two. Swinging right through that pitch is Freddie Sanchez, and he's retired. Strike three. K Cam's going to give us a good look at the cutter. Nice pitch on the inside corner. That gets him fishing a little bit. Well, he wanted that one. You could see it in his body language. He just got outdueled by the pitcher on that one. Base is empty and two down. At the belt, Floyd kicks and throws. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well-executed play right there, Gary. He hustled over, got the first base, touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. Three up, three down this half inning. And it'll be the White Sox. Playing under some nice weather today, at least cool weather. Still need to keep those pitching hands warmed up. And Beckham's in the box. He's going to get us started. Second inning. Right. Unable to make contact with the pitch from Kane. He deals. Strike two. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Got him. One away. Well, this is a pitch right there that you just have to take a bigger hack at right there. He just swung through it. Batting is all about rhythm, and he appeared to be off right there. John, he did. He had, his, uh, he had the timing of the hitter completely off. One out, and Alex Rios at the plate. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Well, let's take a look at where San Francisco ended up rank-wise last year in the National League. Tenth in hits, tenth in stolen bases. And for Team Batting Average, well, the number's just not quite theirs. They did not make the kind of contact you want. really led to some difficulties in scoring runs. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski or uh, Rios. Just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former All-Star. You looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto. It just didn't work out. No balls. One strike. Here's Kane. And that's a strike. A.J. Pierzynski now behind on the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Two away. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they rank. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. And in the batter's box, it's Tian hitting 250 lifetime against the Giants. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. And they pitch out. Uh, nobody's moving. Tries to get back. Out. Close play at second. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. White Sox still looking for a run. Second inning. 
comfortable afternoon for baseball. Not too hot, a little overcast. Number seven, Mark DeRosa. And DeRosa settles in. He's going to start the second for the home team. At the belt, Floyd kicks and throws. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. And it falls in there for a base hit. That will bring one a rebate to the plate. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But even if the batter behind you can figure out a way to get on base, now you have the potential for a huge inning. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. One down. Coming to bat for the San Francisco Giants. Catcher number one. Runner on first Benji now as a Benji Molina. Molina hits. He's 0 for 3 for his career off Floyd. On the way. He swings on that 0-0 delivery. Misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Hit in the air, in right, foul territory. Out number two. Coming to bat for the San Francisco Giants. Right fielder, number 12. It's going to be Sherholtz now. If you didn't get a chance to watch the last ball game, let's bring you up to speed. Got a pitch he could drive. He hit one out of the ballpark, so I don't think they got to be looking to get somebody out in front of him today as well. This one swung on, hit down the line in right. And it's going to be Quentin. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Here's another good inning from Gavin Floyd. Nothing doing in the first two. Goose eggs on the board for him. And it'll be the White Sox. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. He's watched some great deliveries on the mound. Struggling bats, though. Important now to get the offense stinging. Here's Mike Tian leading it off. Kane gets set and delivers. Swings and grounds this one foul wide a third. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And that'll set down Tian. Shortstop makes a nice play right here, Gary. Good feet at that position. Gets the easy out at first. Katze into the batter's box. Base is empty with one away. Hard grounded a short. Renteria. And Katze retired. And Juan Pierre to bat. He singled in his last at bat. Two outs, space is empty. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Swings, hits this one in the air down the right field line. And there's Sherholtz for the third out. So Matt Kane gets them three up, three down. No runs allowed through three. Home half of the third inning coming up. We'll be looking to the leadoff batter later on in this inning, another A.B. And here's Aubrey Huff. First base. Number 19, Aubrey Huff. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Pretty good pitch right there. He's teasing him just barely in the strike zone. Looks like it might break down for a ball, but it stays right there. By the time you recognize, too late to put a good swing on it, and you swing and miss. Really bad pitch right there to ball. And Przinski calls for the pitch. And Floyd unable to find the strike zone.
2 2 on the way. Back up the middle. Oh, man, was that close. That was right back at him. Somehow he got out of the way. That brings up Edgar Renderia. Well, a nice piece of hit right there. You get on base to start the inning with no outs. And you know, all it does is you want to just keep the line moving if you're the guys behind him. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. He's gone 5 for 14 lifetime against Gavin Floyd. He delivers. Swing and a soft liner up the middle. And that'll put Renteria on first. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Number 33. Uh, oh, one mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate, and he pays for it. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. First one to Rowan. Here's the pitch. And he watches the outside pitch from Floyd for a ball. Ready with a 1-0. That's outside. Ball two. And that swung on and hit. Rios. The pop heads for third. Well, he gets the first out of the inning right there. Now let's see if he can continue to bear down, work his way out of this jam, and keep the score tight. Runners on first and second with one out. And Sanchez in the box, first pitch. There's a swing and a miss behind 0 and 1. He's hitting 333 lifetime off Gavin Floyd. At the belt, Floyd kicks and throws. Sanchez is going to have to be very careful here. Strike two. All the pressure on the hitter right now. He knows that he has to protect the plate in order not to strike out. Swing and a miss on the cutter that time. Two down. Okay, now we're going to get a chance to see the cutter here, Gary. He takes a cut on this pitch down and in in the zone, but just unable to pick it up. You like his aggression on that? Well, Skipper can't be too mad as long as he's out there trying to make something happen. Chance to drive it a run for Pablo Sandoval. Up in the top five in average last year. First pitch on the way to Sandoval. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. Oh, and here he goes now for third. He is safe at third base ahead of that play. The 1 0 now. Fastball just misses and he falls behind 2 0. Well, he ranks near the top, no question about it. A tremendous offensive player and a guy that uh, they're looking to have a major impact in this lineup this season. Ground ball to short, fielded by Ramirez. Safe, too late to make the play at home. He's across. So San Francisco able to continue this offense. Well, as a pitcher, there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. You hate these type of hits, but he makes a great pitch. The ball just hit in an absolute perfect spot where no one can get to it in time to beat him on the throw to first. At the belt, Floyd kicks and throws. DeRosa will lay off that one up high. Good odds here. Six ABs, two hits, lifetime against Floyd. That one swung out and missed by Mark DeRosa. That'll even up the count. Good spot for the cutter that time. One and two. One two pitch coming. Foul ball behind home plate. Struck him out. He gets out of this with just a little hurt. First run of the game, third inning. They'll try to build on that momentum. The Giants on top, one to nothing. And it's 
So Alexei Ramirez, Ramirez now to lead it off. Shortstop for 10. Alexei Ramirez. Kane gets set and delivers. Renteria. And so Ramirez retired. Canerco at the plate. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed, left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. Well, working on the 0-1 count now. Canerco certainly one of those valuable. Swung on, lined over the first baseman's head. That one headed into the corner. Going to try for at least a double. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, and one of the top ten averages right now. There's a swing and a liner towards first, and Huff makes that play, and he holds the runner at second. And Beckham's in the box. Runner on second and two outs. And here's the first one. Hit sharply towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Another solid inning from Matt Kane. Four inning shutout mound work. Boy, he's keeping a tidy house right now. And we'll see the Giants. Middle of the lineup coming along. There's the man in charge, Bruce Bochy. One run lead for his team right now. And in the batter's box, it's a rebate. He's ready to start the home half here in the fourth inning. First pitch to him. Swing and a hot shot. And that's a base hit. Uribe on it first. And that'll bring up Benji Molina. Well, that's the start they wanted right there. You get the first guy on with the inning. No outs. Big things could happen now. The runner on first, no outs. At the belt, Floyd kicks and throws. Slider misses badly with it. 1 0. A 1 0 pitch. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And that one falls in there for a single. A rebase headed for third. And now he's heading for home. And a rebase will score. So the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in the swing to get that low ball, to be able to pick up the hit. It's going to be Sherholtz now. Steve, we've seen them continue to charge it up at the plate, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped. Now, Gary, we just saw quality at bat right there. He got the job done. When he got his pitch, he knew what to do with it, and he delivered. Runner on third and still no outs. The first pitch taps this one foul off to the left. As Ralph Kiner, our old buddy, used to say, you know, a good at bats is one where you get production, and that's what they got right there. Yeah, but he's also the guy who said you can't win the game unless you take the lead. Strike two. With that strike, Floyd is out in front now, 0-2. The pitch hit hard on the ground to short. It's through. The runner's going to come home. Now coming to bat. The pitcher's count. Hitter's pitch. That's an 0-2 count. A little too aggressive on the pitcher's part coming into the strike zone. Good piece of hitting. 
That will give Aubrey Huff the chance with a runner on. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Boy, so many quality at bats for this offense. The pitcher has to make a pitch here and slam this door shut, or this could get away from him. Oh, one count as that started off with a strike. Steve, absolutely right. They uh, can't afford to give up too many more here. This thing's going to disappear from them. And from the offense's perspective, hey, if they're making mistakes, capitalize on it because you just don't know what's going to happen later in the game. Let's see what he does here. Sharp bike to that slider, one and two. The one two on its way. And Aubrey Huff is struck out on a big cut. That's a hard biting curveball right there with great break. Off the top to put in play, swung right through it. Here's Renteria's first look. That one's too low. Floyd missing on that. So if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Swung on, line softly, right field line. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. This is an opening for San Francisco. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside, go the other way. We've got Aaron Rowland in the box. He is three for 18 lifetime against the White Sox. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And Shareholtz comes in to score. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Number 21, Freddy Sanchez. Well, anytime you have two hits in a game, it will build confidence, and he's carrying it over into this game. One out with runners at first and second. And Sanchez in the box for a pitch. Plays off that one outside, 1 0. Now Przinski positions himself. Low for a ball to Sanchez. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. Two one pitch and Sanchez a swing and a miss and that will even up the count. Well, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Here it comes. Still two two. Sanchez fighting off another one a quality at bat. But once you get this long in the at bat and that pitcher throws you his best fastball and you foul it off, you'd have to think that you have the advantage as a hitter. Outside for a ball. And it's full. Three and two. The three two pitch. Fastball got him looking two down. Couldn't make a better two strike pitch right there. He's working well with the catcher, hitting his spot, powering that fastball down and away. Chance to drive in a run for Pablo Sandoval. An exciting hitter. Boy, he is some fun to watch. Two men on and two men out. First pitch on the way to Sandoval. Fastball swung out of miss, stowing one. Let's go, Pablo! Hit it deep, baby! Oh. 
And Pablo Sandoval watches that one go by. Count is even. Hit one out of the ballpark last time out. Solo home run. And look for him to have some momentum coming into this game now. Feeling good about himself. Hit up the middle. In time for the out. A strike for five base hits in this inning and three runs up. Some breathing room for San Francisco. Up by four. Rios to lead off. He's one for one so far. Kane gets set and delivers. That's hit foul by Rios. No balls, one strike. Here's Kane. That's a strike, and it's 0 2. Time for Rios now to protect. Gary, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound, and the defense has not felt that much pressure either. Here's one, hit very well deep. Rowan's there. Didn't have a problem getting over there in time. It's going to be Brzezinski. Well, A.J. Brzezinski put together a pretty solid season for the White Sox in 2009, hitting 300. He doesn't strike out a lot. He's a contact guy. You'd like to see maybe drive in a little more runs, only 49 RBIs. But I tell you what, what he does for the pitching staff is something that can't be ignored. That brings up Mark Tian. A.J. Brzezinski, you look at the size, and you think you're going to get a lot of big power numbers from him. But that has not been the case. He's really more of an on-base percentage guy. He's an on-base guy. He works counts. He makes pitchers work, and he and he has the ability to inside out the ball the other way. Yeah, a guy that big, you think, you know, he's going to hit four or five hundred foot home runs, but he's not. He's a, he's a singles hitter. He's an opposite field guy, too. Kane gets set and delivers. And that's a hit. Rowan to field. Two away. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And Mark Kotze up. Lifetime four for 15 off Matt Kane. A runner on first with two outs. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. No runs on a base hit. They leave one man on at first. White Sox still looking for a run. Well, look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. And a bit of frustration at this point. Not the game he'd hoped, at least now. And here's Mark DeRosa leading it off. One for two in the ballgame. And DeRosa ready for the first pitch. Strike one. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Here's the pitch. Up the middle. Up to the plate. What a tremendous the catch right there. I mean, what a great the effort the hitter. getting to that Number ball, making that catch. One. Uribe. And in the batter's box, it's Uribe. Well, when the San Francisco Giants were making a run in the second half, a lot of it was due in part that Juan Uribe really picked it up in that second half. He had a lot of clutch hits for the Giants in 2009, 16 home runs. That one swung on its line. And that's a base hit. Uribe on it first. And that'll bring up Benji Molina. Or Juan Uribe, John, what's uh, what's always tantalizing is a shortstop who's got the power he has. Well, he does. And the great thing about it is, is that when they needed someone to play second base, they moved him over to second base, and his numbers didn't drop off. First delivery to Molina. Swings a little late that time. Strike one. Lifetime. 233 hitter off the white side. Hit hard to second. It's scooped up. The second for one. And there's the second out of double play. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. Giants four. The White Sox number. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports.
And it's Juan Pierre now to lead it off. Well, here's the talk of the last game. Four base hits in that one, and a lot of confidence building around him right now. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Good pitch from Kane. Swung on and missed. But Gary, they've only left a couple runners on base offensively so far through the middle part of this ball game, and you know they're going to have to give themselves more opportunity. Hit in the air to left center. Rollins there, and he gets over to take care of it. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's got four hits in 13 lifetime at bats off the Giants. Here's the first pitch. That one's wide as Kane misses. And a struggling season in 2009 for Alexia Ramirez. Here was a guy that they thought they would put at the top of their lineup. He'd steal a lot of bases, but unfortunately he got off to such a bad start. One one on the way. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. And it's up against the wall. And he's in at second with a double. One out. Well, like say Ramirez, yet another one of the uh, Cuban defectors getting a chance to play Major League Baseball. Well, and the White Sox seem to think that he could be a top of the order guy. He struggled in 2009, but if he can rebound from the 2009 season and have a season like he did in 2008, and along with Gordon Beckham, they have a great one two punch. And he starts Canerco out. And Kane has him 0 and 1. Gets there with that one a called strike. Here's the delivery. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Panerko now will look to tighten up that zone. And Paul Canerco strikes out, could not make contact. That three pitch strikeout coming with a runner in scoring position. Well, and he wasn't even distracted by that runner. His focus was on the hitter and on the plate, and he got it done. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. First pitch to Quinton. Hard ground at a short. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. That's a fine inning for Matt Kane. He's in line for a win and a good lead to work with. And we'll see the Giants. It's going to be Shareholds now. Single home a run in his last at bat. And the first pitch. Ball. Misses high, ball one. 250 average lifetime. That's one for four against Tony Pena. The 1 0 now. Right. Fastball waved at, missed. 1 0 1. He watches the 1 1 pitch, takes a fastball, strike two. Velocity and location are absolutely critical. That pitch was exactly where he wanted to throw it. The one-two pitch. Oh. Still one and two. A line drive towards short. Fielded by Ramirez. And so Sherholtz retired. And here's Aubrey Huff. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. One out, nobody on. And Przinsky calls for the pitch. That one off the bat of Huff. This one towards Pierre. And he meanders over to put it away. Shortstop. And it's Edgar Renteria at the plate. Base is empty with two outs. Here's Renteria's first look. 
Couldn't get around in time. 0-1. Well, this is just one of those pitches right there that he had a chance to put in play, but his indecisiveness caused him to hesitate. And when you hesitate, you are lost, especially in the batter's box. And he watches one at the knees, and it's one and two. Better to go after the fastball when a guy has quality secondary pitches. Even though it's down to the zone, you've got to swing at that. Here's the pitch. It's hit foul by Renteria. And Renteria not fooled by that one. He evens up his count. Well, the setup man right now is over the 30 pitch mark, and I tell you, these guys are used to having quick innings and basically only pitching one inning at a time. The more pitches he throws, the better chance the opposition has of hitting him. He was uh, able to ring up that K, and that's going to get him out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no one left on. Giants, four. The White Sox, nothing. And Beckham's in the box. He'll start things off here in the seventh. Number 50, Gordon Beckham. Here's the first pitch. Swings, lines this one back up the middle, and it's through. That's a base hit. So that'll bring Alex to Rios to the plate. The well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. And he starts Rios out. Hit up the middle. And in there, he's two for three today. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. You know, most of the time, a pitch on the outside part of the plate is a very good pitch, but not to this hitter. He loves to get those long arms extended, and he drove that one. It's going to be Przinski. Had a base hit his last time up. Unable to make contact with the pitch from Kane. Well, what an outstanding effort. Uh, by the pitcher today. I mean, he has just been on top of his game, making the pitches, and offensively, they just have not been able to back hits up with other hits to mount the rally. They've been held scoreless here today. Here's the pitch. Swing liner back up the middle. That is in. It's going to bring the tying run to the plate. And that'll bring Mark T into the plate. Well, that's three consecutive hits he's given up. He can't be out of gas yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. That swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And it's in there. So tee in knocks in the run. And Rios comes across to score. And Pierzynski comes across, too. Well, the shutout now, broken up right the there, but I tell you what, Chicago no White shame Sox. in the performance he's given in this one. He's been outstanding. Mark Cleared Fox the bases with that swing. Three RBIs. Here's the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. Well, in a ball game like this, you make this kind of a play, you had better be safe. You are in scoring position on second base. This is a very risky play. It worked out, but you have to wonder if it was too risky to take. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. One. Looking at a lot of determination right now. They are closing in. These are crucial at-bats. Now, Gary, you know what? They're chipping away at this lead and just in time to... Here's a swing, a fly ball deep down the line and right. This one to Sherholtz. As he teens on his way home. And it's tied up. The tying run crosses the plate. A good piece of hitting right there. Listen, he's not a star, but he knows what to do. Good, productive at bat. Well, Steve, they won't get the RBI on this, but they'll give themselves a better chance of getting a run. Well, moving the runners up, that's what you have to do. Make productive outs. And it's Juan Pierre now. Whoa, it is happening now. It may be a little late, but then again, they've got momentum, Steve. Uh, Gary, we just saw quality at bat. They capitalized on the opportunity. And now an opportunity to pull ahead here in this game. So outstanding clutch hitting. Line towards third and foul. 
And this is where all the errors and or in this case the positives really shine because you haven't got a lot of room left. You know, Gary, now if they can manufacture a run and take the lead, it could make all the difference and lead to a victory. And Pierre, oh. another foul ball. Hot shot towards the hole. Well, this is now unbelievable. I mean, this guy's completely lost it out there now. They've strung together five consecutive hits against him. Clearly, he's run out of gas. The pitch headed for the middle. Oh, my. How did he get out of the way of that? Those are scary. And they turn the double play. Matt Cain, uh, that's an inning where he couldn't find the pitches. And we'll see the Giants. The top of the order is due up next. First one to Rowan. Here's the pitch. Slider just misses. One and oh. Now swinging a shot toward second. That's one down. And Freddy Sanchez up. Called out on strikes in his last appearance. Base is empty, one out. And Sanchez in the box, first pitch. First pitch, a slider outside, one and oh. Here's the pitch. Strike one, Pena evens the count. He's just popping that glove with that four seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. Missed with the fastball outside, two and one. Now the two one pitch. And Sanchez is swinging a miss, and that will even up the count. Fastball got him two down. Now up to the plate. With two With strikes, the, the hitter wanted at the fastball. Third he base. got it, but Number didn't do anything eight. with it. Sandoval at the plate. Two outs and nobody on. First pitch, here it comes. And this is hit in the air, foul down the left field line. Had a look at that one, but can't come up with it. Strike Pena two. with a strike two. Good pitch. Boy, he's got great movement on that two-seamer. It's one of the best around. Oh. Trying to get him to chase a slider, but it's one and two. Ball swung on and missed, side retired. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. White Sox four, Giants four. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. We'll try it again here, just one for three thus far. Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Takes a swing at that fastball, can't connect 0 and 1. Only a 148 career average against the Giants. Oh. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. The 1-1. Swung on, line to right field. 
Now and Sherholz takes care of that one. Right and it's Carlos Quentin in the box now. Ground out victim last time through. Nobody on base, one away. The pitch, swung on, liner to right. So Quinton is retired. That's two gone. And Beckham's in the box. He singled his last trip. Two outs, bases empty. First pitch on the way. Swing and a line drive. And that'll retire the side. Caught by Sanchez. And they are retired in short order. Good defensive half inning. Now the Giants. Home half of the eighth inning. Bruce Bochy looking on. And he knows it starts with great pitching. Happy with the last inning on the mound. Not looking for the offense. And DeRosa settles in. Here's the first one. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0-1. Well, that's right down the chute. The hitter must be looking for something else. Otherwise, you have to swing at that. Ball. And he leaves that one alone. Mike DeRosha, patience, and evens the count up. Now the 1-1 pitch. Can make contact on that fastball. 1-2. One two pitch coming. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out one down. You got a second now to see the four seam fastball in KK. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought the uh, timing that time just didn't seem to be there in the at bat. Well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. And in the batter's box, it's a rebate. Well, Juan Uribe was a shortstop for the Chicago White Sox in 2005 when they won the World Series. Now he plays anywhere they'll have him. He played majority of games at second base for the Giants in 2009. Put up some pretty big numbers, especially in the second half. Here's the pitch. High for a ball, 1-1. Juan Uribe has had to adjust uh, his mental and physical approach to the game, going from the everyday player the guy who's asked to come off the bench and be ready whatever the situation is. And that's one of the hardest things because whatever point you're at in your career, you always think you're an everyday player. He's had to accept the fact that he's only going to get 400 to 450 at bats, and you better make him worth it. And he did in 2009. I'll commit on that hard slider, now 3-1. and one. And We'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, managers face so many different decisions during the course of a game. And as the game goes on and it's close, those decisions become much more critical to success or failure. Lined up the middle. Beckham. That's two gone. For the San Francisco Giants. Catcher. Number one. And here's Benji, Benji Molina. Molina. We'll get another shot after hitting into that double play last time up. Base is empty and two down. First delivery to Molina. Swung on, hit. And through for a hit. The go-ahead run is on. Uh, you have two outs in the inning. Your job is to get on base any way you can. Now they have the go-ahead run on base. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch. And the pitch from Jenks. Too high for a ball. 
Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher, took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. At the belt, the 1 0. Can make contact with the fastball, evens him up. What a one. The pitch. Sharp break there, but he misses two and one. The two one pitch. Strike two one delivery of fastball swung on strike two. Fastball swung on and missed and the size retired. No runs on a hit and they'll strand him. And it'll be the White Sox. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. And at this point, every move is critical. He hasn't got any margin for error. Alex Rios has been in these situations before and gotten the job done. Let's see if he can get it done again. Well, we're in the top half of the last inning. This ball game tied up, so the potential go-ahead is up there. Now, this is what you're playing for. You can throw all the scouting reports. A smash towards the, the hole, back. and Huff Chicago makes White. that play. Number 12. It's going to be Brzezinski. He is 7 for 20 lifetime against the Giants. Base is empty, one out. And the first pitch. Smash towards the middle. Render rear in the pickup. So Krasinski retired. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's six in a row that he set down. Base is empty with two outs. A swing line to left center. And DeRosa puts that one away to retire the side. Amazingly fast inning. Uh, outs here coming quickly. Three pitches. White Sox four. Giants four. On camera, there's a shot of Bruce Bochy. This is where the at-bats are very crucial. He doesn't want to have to go to extras if he can help it. And it's Aubrey Huff to lead us off. Flew out last time. Jenks with a delivery. And Ramirez feels the ball. And that'll set down Huff. Number 16. And it's Edgar Renteria now. A 272 lifetime average against the White Sox. Here's Renteria's first look. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four-seamer down in the way. Bobby Jenks, the strike two pitch, and Jenks now in charge. Hit sharply towards the hole. And they get him at first base. Good hustle by the pitcher to get over there. Now, great work by the pitcher there. He normally not called upon to play first base. He does a nice job completing the task of getting the out. First one to Rowan. Here's the pitch. And the pitch from Jenks. Too high for a ball. When you throw a two-seam fastball, you want a ground ball, which means you want to throw it to the bottom of the zone. This pitch up could come back to cost him later in the game. In there at the letters, evening the count at one and one. Well, the hitter lays off this one and takes the strike, realizing not a pitch he wants in this situation. One-one one pitch. Outside for a ball, and it's two and one. Strike two. The two-one pitch. Takes a called strike on the outer half. It'll even things at two. Striking out, no contact made. Good defensive half inning there, no hits allowed. White Sox four, Giants four. Bottom part of the order will get their chance offensively. 
is a familiar face. Eyes again looking up. And thinking, I'm sure, about the approach here to win this ballgame. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. He's ready to start the 10th inning. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Line shot into center field. And he can't run it down. And this rolls all the way to the wall. At the plate for the Chicago Well, these kind of hits right here, a double with no outs to start an inning, really puts the pitcher at a disadvantage and puts a lot of added pressure on that pitcher. Now a single can bring home a run. Runner on at second. RBI opportunity now, Juan Pierre. And he is batting here late in the game in a crucial spot. Well, you've got a base runner. You don't know if you're going to get another opportunity. The game may be on the line right here. This is the chance at a game-winning RBI. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. It's hard to get the kind of action you want on a two-seam fastball up in the zone, but his location away caused it to be effective anyways. Strike two. Pierre now has got to be careful, but a good punch hitter. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. Hot shot towards the hole. Well, you talk about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Well, they're going to be keeping an eye on Pierre right now, Gary. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. He picks it up. Oh, boy, they collide at the plate. And out, the catcher stood him up and made the play. Sometimes uh, the winding road to victory can be measured. Here's a clearer look, thanks to Pepsi and our WPA graph. Watch this replay. As a catcher, you know what's coming, but you also know you got to hang on. Now that's one of those ones that... He's up right now, but he's going to be feeling this one tomorrow. But an excellent job of blocking the plate and getting the out. And he starts Canerco out. Swings and hits this one deep down the line and left. Hits off the wall and left. The air is heading home. There's the throw. And he comes in to score, and they have snatched that lead. At the plate. And they're the able to get two ball. runs in. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos. Quinton. You always want a cushion as you send your pitcher out to try to shut down the game. That hit delivers a run, and now it's a two-run game. I think they have the margin they need to hold on to victory. Well, there is one down here. You got a man on second base, going to give up the uh, pass, maybe try for two. Uh, a hit here scores the man on second, so obviously they're going to look for the double play. Here is the opportunity for the youngster, Gordon Beckham. The White Sox get another chance here. Runners on first and second with one out. Here's the delivery. Well hit towards the middle. That's one out. And two, a double play. They pick up two, three hits, strand a man. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Freddy Sanchez leading it up. 0 for 4 in this one. Number 21, Freddy Sanchez. And Sanchez in the box, first pitch. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Oh. Here's the 1-0 from Jenks. And Sanchez, a swing and a miss, and that will even up the count. The 1-1 pitch, line drive. Beckham able to pull that one in. That ball was hit so hard, the second baseman barely had time to react, but playing in the right spot, he gets the out. Base is empty with one away. Right 
Jenks with a delivery. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0-1. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, and he's behind on the count, 0-2. Sandoval will foul that one away. Another foul ball. Sandoval goes deep. Well, you have an 0-2 count, and that pitcher comes up in the strike zone. You know he's looking for that strikeout. Now you've taken a little bit of confidence away from him with the fact that you can foul that pitch up in the zone off to live to see another day. And Pablo Sandoval is struck out. Big swing and a miss. KKM registers this at 86 miles per hour with some pretty good break. Oh, Gary, that's a great pitch right there. Great command and control. Hitting his spot down and in. That makes it real tough on the hitter. Two outs, bases empty. Here's the first pitch. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. It rolls all the way to the wall. He's not stopping there. He's on his way to third. At the plate. Well, the one thing you never want to do is make the last out at third base to end an inning. But he was able to get in there with that great speed just in time. A lot riding on Juan Uribe's bat here, Gary. Let's see if he's up for the showdown. Now, all of a sudden, this team's got the tying run, Steve, at the plate. And with first base open, we're going to have to see how the pitcher wants to handle this. Now the first pitch. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. Well, I tell you what, the offensive team is really doing a good job right now. You never want your closer to throw over 30 pitches, but that's oh. where they have him right now. Let's see if they can try to finish him off. Jenks with a delivery. Swing and a fly ball, and this might be it. That's the last out. This ball game is now over. The offense got it done on the top, and the pitching got it done on the bottom half, and celebration as they head back to the clubhouse. And time to present the Pepsi Clutch Performer Award. You know, Gary, everyone thinks that the home run's the only way to drive in runs, but not in this game today. This guy, every time he had runners in scoring position, he delivered for his team, and he cashed in when he got the chance in this one. And, Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. It's a good victory. Hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. And until next time, this is Gary Thorne, along with John Crockett and Steve Phillips. We'll catch you at the yard.